So uh, let me introduce you to the wonderful team of this wonderful film. First, we have uh, the producer. I hope I will say your name correctly. <laughs> it's Patricia Poyenaru. Perfect. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> and then we have uh, Francesco Correa. Francesco Correa. Wonderful actor. <laughs> and then we have Vlad Ivanov. <laughs> and then we have the wonderful Catherine L. Marlon, okay, hello. who is great in the film. And then we have the director, Cornelio Pombuyu. Thank you. Well, Cornelio, I will start with a question. Where and when did you learn about this wonderful whistled language for the first time? So first time I saw a TV report, like it was 10 years ago. I, uh, I was just finishing Police Adjective, another film of mine that it was here in uh, Un Certain Regard. And uh, yeah, I was in holiday in France uh, and uh, I saw this TV report and I start, uh, yeah, I get interested in this language. I was a little fascinated, in fact, by this language and I started to, yeah, to to look, uh, to read about it, and uh, uh, in in the beginning, I will uh, I tried to write a script. It was not so good, so uh, I drop it off. I I, uh, I work at other films, and after my last one, my last fiction, uh, the treasure, I came back to this uh, subject. And uh, all of you guys, how did you learn it, and was it easy or difficult? Should I start? Hello. Um, was 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 hard. It was easy because um, after we we knew that we took the part, Cornelio told us that we should um, we should learn this secret language, the El Silbo. And uh, for two weeks, I was in Bucharest with the three others uh, other actors, and we learned the base. Um, and when you learn the bass, actually, you learn how to keep your arm and the finger in your mouth and how to find the sound because you cannot whistle. So after we trained like for one year, like twice a week on Skype, we was doing conference uh, in La Gomera with Kiko. And uh, yeah, it didn't was easy. <laughs> what about you? So uh, when he <coughs> told us that we have to learn um, Civil language. I, I told him, uh, I think it's a joke. It's a good joke, but uh, <laughs> after he was very serious. So uh, we met uh, Kiko Korea in Bucharest for two weeks, and we we um, it was a hard work for four hours per day, and our eyes was all the time like that. <laughs> and um, so after we had some um, Skype uh, lessons. And it was funny. It was uh, the funny moment was in um, La Gomera when we we had shooting there, and uh, we can um, hear uh, hear the people um, um, at the terrace or on the streets uh, talking with the civil language. And I've got also a special request for Francis Francisco. Could you answer with that wonderful language? <laughs> or tell us something. I'm Well, what do you want me to say? Whatever you want. Whatever you want, try. Sure, sure. sure. Bueno, How eh, was the kids, for example, how did you actors to silbar? Well, teaching the actors to whistle was a bit complicated. I'm used to, to teaching children. But, uh, or adults who really want to learn, but it wasn't a very common language, so it wasn't easy. And also, we didn't have much time, so we had to learn, people had to learn really quickly. The students were absolutely fantastic, though they were excellent students, and they learned extremely quickly. I'm very pleased to be in Cannes, that I said in Spanish. I'm going to ask to let you ask questions, but first I want to introduce some special people who are in front of me. Uh, we have the producer, Sylvie Piala. And we have we have a 
few actors of the film who are not on, uh, with us, but who are here just in front of me. We have Rodi Calazar. We have Antonio Buil. And Augusti Villalonga. Villalonga. Donc voilà, je dis en français aussi, hein, nous avons la productrice du so film et quelques-uns des acteurs. The film and some of the other actors with us here too. Over uh, to you. Hi, I'm David from Movieview China. And my question is for the director. I was wondering, you divided the story uh, through uh, all different uh, characters. But uh, when the character's uh, name appeared on the screen, they're in different <laughs> colors. I was wondering, does the colors that like, represent each character specifically? Uh, no, it was more like uh, uh, because it's like a journey of the main character, and we had we wanted to have uh, this journey to be each chapter. It's it's taking part of this journey, and we are thinking at the rainbow colors, you know, to have like a way because it was not more uh, because at the end also in the garden you have all the colors. So it was uh, uh, in. A color doesn't represent a character. It's more like in that very specific chapter, we it was like a, a, a color that it's it's not dominant, but it's it's uh, it's more present, you know, in in uh, in the in the color in the dressing of the characters or uh, in some parts, important parts in the story, you know. Uh, so it was more like that. Thank you. I've got a question for Katrina. Um, tell us about your character. I mean, she's a very strong woman. Do you feel, uh, how would you feel about her? Because she has a great change during the movie. Thank you so much. Thank you for the question, because normally they ask me, how do you feel like a femme fatale in the movie? <laughs> so it's not just a femme fatale, it's, she's a strong woman. Um, it's, um, it was not so hard to play it because my body and my face helped me, but at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the truth, okay. and She's that's Gilda, but that's Gilda. That's, that's a part of Gilda, and the other one is when she shows her for her vulnerability, and she's very sensible, and you can see in the end of the movie uh, her human, human part. She has a soul. She's not uh, just a mafia girl. Yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, I'm Marco Rocha uh, from Biosfera Digital, from Canary Island, from Lanzarote. Um, uh, I was wondering uh, what, uh, which was first, uh, the Iceland or uh, the plot of the film? Uh, first it was the language, and in the same time with the language, it was also uh, a character that, that I had. It, uh, it was a second part in police adjective. So I start with this for these two, two points. But f yeah, the language, I was attracted by the language and uh, yeah, uh, I was I was thinking how it will be the second character, the police officer, from police adjective, another thing that I meant, how it will be in ten years. So that from these two two points, I started to write. Ali, sorry, uh, Alice Kanterian, Observator Cultural Romania. Uh, first of all, congratulations for this beautiful uh, film. Um, and I would like to address my question to Katrina and Vlad. Um, I mean, it was, how did, uh, I mean, you're very experienced, Vlad, obviously, but how was it uh, for you, for, um, Katrina, to develop uh, the character, <coughs> and how did Cornelio help you? Um, hello. So, um, Cornelio gave me a base. In, um, we talked in the, in the beginning of the, the, the filming, and he told me that it would be nice to to have a base of uh, some noir movies. And uh, then I was like, why my name is Gilda? It's like Gita, Gilda from uh, Rita Howard. Should I be like her? And he was like, I like her grace. So maybe you will have her grace, and then we build the character together. And the character have different twisted. So we was playing while we was working. That's the way we did. Yeah, we prepared the situation. We were. We work a lot on each situation, and of course, in the casting period, because we we, we made uh, we spent quite uh, quite a lot time a lot of time in the casting. There we uh, we talk also the scenes about the, each scene, and uh, yeah, Vlad. Please. 
Yeah, I can tell that uh, I feel that I was lucky because um, Cornelio asked me kindly to help him to cast other actors. So I had uh, lots of time to, to talk with him about uh, my character. And because uh, the actors uh, who we casted was very, very different, I had uh, uh, time to, to have an idea about uh, uh, Christy. And we talk about uh, uh, policeman adjective and Christy maybe is the same policeman after kind of years. So... Uh, I think we can. We we, we talked uh, with uh, with eyes so much. <laughs> no, we uh, we have to. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we spend more than one year on the casting. Uh, so, uh, how I build all the cast around uh, Vlad, around Christy, we have every option that we had. Uh, I had for Jill or for Magda or uh, I did with uh, I did uh, the casting with Vlad in the last part of. Uh, uh, so. Uh, at the end of the day, Vlad, uh, he was uh, uh, playing with 10 Gildas, uh, he was uh, cast uh, uh, 10 like Magdas, and, <laughs> and uh, it, it, of course in the casting uh, period we, we, talk about, uh, we talk about him also and we talk about the other characters, so it was a long process and, and that helps us a lot on the shooting. Okay, uh, Irina Nistor, so I'm from Romania, from Adevaru, written press and also radio and television. Uh, I was uh, just curious to know about Gilda, but you said something about Rita Hayard, because I was quite curious to know if the name Gilda was from there, or it was Gilda from the opera, from Rigoletto, because you used a lot of opera in your film. So, have you thought of that too? Uh, for me, it was that the, uh, you don't know if... In fact, it's not her real name. Okay. She's like a part that yeah. she have it. So uh, she plays that role in a way, and uh, it's not her real na name. So, uh, uh, and this the film, one, sorry, and the film of John Wayne, what is it? You have a, yes, they are going to the Cinematheque. I was quite happy that uh, um, yes, uh, somebody from uh, this world is going to Cinematheque. It's just in front of the police headquarters in Bucharest, that's why. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that was uh, that was coming at one point in, during the script writing I, uh, when I found that scene, uh, uh, which is great because uh, it's the same, it's the whistling language yeah. there, and also uh, the situation of the characters. They are similar with the situation of the main character. But it was yeah, well, I was looking, I was searching for uh, classical uh, Western scenes, and uh, I get into that. I uh, I. Uh, because I forgot it when I saw it the first time, but when I see uh -huh. it there, it was like a, you know, a match, you know. So it, it was perfect for the. For it that. matched very well also with yes. the film of uh, Nicolae So yeah. <laughs> it worked quite okay. And congratulations for Vlad. Thank you. Thank you. So I've got a question for Patricia. Was it hard to produce, and sometimes did you have to say no to this guy? <laughs> Well, um, we did our best to not to have to say no to many times. And yes, um, it was a difficult film to put together uh, because, first of all, it was a very complex um, um, shoot and it was bigger than, uh, than the means that we had. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, we started financing in about 2016. Um, and uh, the initial plan was to shoot in 2017, but uh, there was a, um, we, we have uh, pushed uh, until the spring of um, 2018, and we started to film in, uh, in Romania, and uh, then the Canary Islands, and um, uh, we finished in Singapore. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, there were challenges, a lot of challenges, but I think um, we were all there for the same reason, to make the best for Cornelio, and here we are, so. <laughs> and is it important for all of you to be in Cannes? And to be in Cannes, and why is it, so, why, why is it important to be in Cannes for a movie like that? <laughs> Whoever wants to answer is welcome. <laughs> no, because uh, first of all, it's a, also it's a Romanian film. It's a, it's a, 
it's very hard for a Romanian speaking language film to be uh, to be uh, uh, distributed abroad and it's important to be here for uh, because it's uh, is the main uh, festival in the world and it's the with the main market you no know, for the films and uh, yeah it's it helps helps me for this project in the same time uh, helps uh, me for my next project because every director um, depends uh, depends a lot of the of the last movie you know so and uh, um Katrina told us about your character but I'd be very curious to hear what you have to say about yours about your character in the film who is this guy and why uh, was he hard to play <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I um, I think he has um, he has a very special life, and he's uh, he's in a moment in his life when he wants to change uh, his uh, uh, his uh, personal life and his profession. But what I what I um, I asked Cornelio even yesterday night if uh, the character is not like that, but uh, I think the character has to keep the tension in in the film, uh, which is which is great. And um, what I liked very much to to this character is his uh, he's watching inside him. Even if he, if he watch outside, he all the time is inside inside, it's, which is very. Very, it's it's quite difficult to keep for all the film this this kind of tension. And same question for Francesco. Well, who is who is your character, and uh, was he hard to play? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, my objective al hacer el personaje era no perjudicar a los demás was uh, not to upset the acting of everybody else. My purpose uh, was not to step on other people's feet and to do my work as an actor as well as I could. Which, are, which were your influences, your main influences for this movie? Uh, the film noir, the classical film noir, that was... Uh, because at one point, when I decided to make uh, this... Uh, to make this structure of puzzling and the, the characters, they play all the time other other parts, other ro uh, roles, and uh, they they hide. In fact, so when I decided this, I, I get back to I get back and I saw uh, classical film noirs from Big Sleep, uh, the uh, Double Indemnity, um, uh, Gilda, Laura, uh, Third Man. Uh, they are films that I love and I. It was very, uh, very nice to revisit now after after years. Also, Notorious. Uh, it's a film and Hitchcock. It's a, a great filmmaker that I love. And uh, yeah, there were films that I uh, I start to see it. Uh, uh. The movie is an homage to cinema, but also to music. And tell us about uh, your musical choices, because you've got Iggy Pop, Mozart, a lot of. Different things and a, a wonderful, a, a lot of humor with it. That was coming also after the script, and in uh, some of the music, it was come out right after, uh, even in the editing <laughs> period, because uh, yeah, I, I edit the film like six months. Uh, the first, uh, the first draft of the editing, it was like uh, 30 minutes more than what is now. So I took out a, a lot of scenes. Uh, so yeah, the, the few songs they were coming, uh, uh, they were coming in this period, um, and uh, the other like uh, Le Belle Nuit, so, uh, this type of song that is playing in the in, uh, dramaturgically in the film, they were choosing before. So uh, how I yeah I can't say now. Uh, uh, Precisely each uh, each uh, each uh, period. Yeah, I don't know. It's like uh, I like music, and I think and, uh, it was quite easy because I choose all this. <laughs> do you do you have or your actors listen to music before performing their parts to help them get in the mood? Uh, when we were shooting the scenes into the night in the night and 
with uh, Christy, with uh, Vlad, we are playing music in the same time, mm -hmm. and also in the motel. Because like that, it was important, like the, the characters to have this type of mood, you know. So uh, uh, in the scenes where uh, uh, in this, uh, Christy he is going back to the home and to hide the money, to uh, it was important to to have this type of movement into in the garden and uh, to be in the rhythm of the music. So. Uh, we played on the set. There is also a wonderful film in a cinema studio. Yeah. Is it, where is it and what is it? This, uh, when they hide the money, they hide it in a cinema studio? Yeah. You know, on, on the sound stage? Tell us about uh, this location. It's amazing. Uh, this is an uh, ancient uh, cinema studio in Bucharest. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a Western, uh, it's a Western uh, set that it was used like 10 years ago. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's empty now, unfortunately, and uh, it was very inspiring for me because, yeah. Uh, that's for Catrinelle and Francesco. Uh, this, this is, you know, your beginning as a movie star, both of you. Uh, did, how much did you like it and was it, was it difficult? Or was it a, a real pleasure? I know it was hard work, but there were there a dimension of fun in what you were doing? Um, my experience, so for me it was a little bit hard, not very hard, but it was a little bit hard because I started my, my career in Italy as an actress and I work in Italy, I work in the United States, a little bit in France and it was my first casting for a Romanian movie and I was a little bit anxious and nervous when I did the casting because I was like, it was weird for me to act in Romanian because I left Romania 18 years ago. Um, but yeah, it was a great experience, but yesterday, the most impressive thing was yesterday uh, at the theater after I saw the movie, it was the first time I saw the movie, I didn't see the movie in this period, <coughs> and it was impressive to, to see the people whistling <coughs> in the end of the movie, and I think it's the first time in the history of the cinema that somebody whistled in a joyful way and not in a negative way. <laughs> that was very nice. And thank you, Cornelia and Vlad and everybody for, for bringing me here because they are masters. I'm in the beginning. Yeah, no, you use a film. I mean, uh, your character is yeah. very important. Vlad, too, of course. But, uh, they are great actors. <laughs> they helped me to arrive here. So thank you. So, Francisco, your turn. Francisco. <laughs> was it difficult and is it the start of a great career? For you, it's very difficult to be in this film. It's the beginning of a great career in cinematographic. What do you think? Well, for me, it was a wonderful experience. It was complicated at times because I'm not used to acting in a film. But it was a lovely experience. And it was a real gift uh, from Cornelio to be able to play this part in, in his film. I'm very, very grateful and will always be so. I will uh, keep this happy memory yeah. forever in my heart. How, how is Cornelio on the set? You know him for quite a long time, and I'm very curious to know what's about him. Is he difficult? Is he nice? Is he, uh, well, he's a good director, but how is he with his actors? Are you sure you... I answer you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not listening. <laughs> um, I, I have to, to ask my colleagues too because I I was not alone in this film, and thank you, thank you to the the TOP of the film. Uh, it was a wonderful crew. Speaking about all crew, um, and that's why uh, we can did it a beautiful work. But of course, we had some um, moments in um, in a time of shooting uh, when um, we wanted to to find the the um, real um, thing for 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 the sequence or for my character, and uh, Cornelio asked me to come to see um, the camera, to the sequence, to to change something or not. But of course, it was a, a quiet uh, shooting. He's a very nice guy. <laughs> and um, I mean, in time of shooting, I don't know what home. But uh, it was a wonderful work together, so thank you. So what was the most difficult scene for all of you? 
including you. It was most challenging. Yeah, I think it, it was difficult for DOP too, for Tudor. I think it was a, a, a sequence um, inside the ocean. It was the water has four or five degrees, and uh, he was inside with scuba cam, and I was there. And the most difficult moment was when Cornelio came to me and asked me kindly, Vlad, you know, I want to ask you kindly something. Can you do it one more? Because I want to see you in, inside the water with your mouth. <laughs> like that. And say, okay, let's do it. And say, okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so it was nice. Thank you to do again. Katrina? Um, for me, maybe in Singapore, because um, we're supposed to synchronize in the, um, on this spectacle of this music and the trees and every, everything was happening in that garden. And we had just 30 minutes um, to act and to do everything what we're supposed to do um, in the middle of millions of people there. It was very hard to do what Cornelio asked us and we need to be precise on the time and we knew exactly, because we studied uh, the, the concert for a few hours and then in the night when the light was down he was like okay we have 30 minutes Vlad will start from there and you wait there and I have just that look and that's all and I was like okay I hope we'll be fine so then everything was okay right yeah that that was the the hardest part of the shooting because they, in fact there are two shows by night each one has 12 minutes so uh, we have to pass through all the garden twice and at the end, uh, uh, we had to shoot uh, uh, one direction with Vlad, and in the other one, one direction with uh, her, with uh, Katrinel. So yeah, that was quite, uh, quite, uh, quite hard. Yeah. How did you find out about this wonderful location? YouTube. <laughs> I was interested in, uh, yeah, in uh, this type of, uh, in the gardens, and because the female of the gardens is. It's uh, it's in the in, it's in uh, it's in the film. Uh, it's important, like space, the garden of the mother, the island. It's in a way a certain type of garden. And uh, uh, at the end, I, I needed, I wanted to have this futuristic garden. So uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I someone sent me a photo and I check it and I. Uh, I'm also curious about, uh, there is a f there is a, the John Ford film that everybody knew, but I don't know the, the other movie. Can you tell us about the one they see and the, the, the thriller they see? Is it a Romanian film? It's a Romanian film from 70s. Uh, it's about, uh, to be short, it's a, about a, uh, a cop who is incorruptible, and at the end of the film, he's, he dies. Yeah. He dies, so it's a film from 70s, yeah. It's a, it looks wonderful, but um, yeah, they did it. It's a, they were very inspired by uh, by uh, American films, and uh, the stunt there in the it's quite good. Yeah. And Francisco, you're not out uh, yet. So, what was your most challenging scene for you? Well, the biggest challenge. Everything, absolutely everything, was a challenge. Perhaps the scene where they kill Kiku, the character, that was what was most difficult for me. Because there's a moment when there are a lot of people who depend on me, and there I felt really scared because there's a big close-up on me. That was frightening. Uh, also a question about the title. Why, why there is a different title, you know, in English, in French, and uh, in Romanian? And uh, is, it, is it more sellable or? Tell us about so it. the original <coughs> title of the film was Gomera. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in post-production, we had um, several conversation on the title, um, especially the international title. And um, Cornelio has, uh, um, came up with the, uh, the Whistlers, um, and we decided to keep La Gomera as the original title um, because this was with the movie for four years. And um, 
And the French title, it's just the translation, basically, of the, the Whistler. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah, La Gomera, it was uh, also because when, when we were speaking with, uh, uh, when I was speaking with Juliette from Encadu, mm -hmm. it was this problem with Gomera, Gomora. Gomor even with the people, uh, even the people from the team, uh, you know, it, it would be good this film, Gomora. You know, it's La Gomera, you know. So, so, <laughs> so, uh, so it was the, this re uh, resemblance. And in the same time, I think it's uh, the Whistlers, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it rhymes in a way with the. the with the searchers, so uh, I think it's a good solution for an in international title, for the international title. Can you tell us also about the violence in the movie? There are some very violent scenes. Uh, how did you deal with that? How did you choose where to draw the line for violence, especially when uh, this guy is getting... That one, yeah, that is the most... Uh, on the other hand, I think uh, the Western scenes, the shootings uh, in the Western uh, scenes, uh, in the night, that way I prefer to be less realist, uh, less, uh, less naturalistic. So uh, I'm not very fond in, uh, in directing the uh, violent scenes, but in this film I choose, uh, in a way, yeah, I put the accents on that uh, on on that uh, particular act, you know, when he's uh, cutting the throat. So it was all. Um, in fact, it was a matter of how you put the accent, you know, so uh, I choose that the accent, it will be there. So that for the, the shootout in the night, I, I made it more classical uh, because you hear more uh, the gun, not the, the bullet into the, into the cork, you know, so it's, it's, an, aesthetic, it's an aesthetical choice. You know? There are also a lot of changes of tone in the movie. It's fun, it's uh, you know, suspense, it's a thriller, it's a western. How did you deal with that? Did you knew that, uh, how, how did you find the rhythm of the movie? Was it during the writing or did you do a No, lot of in things? the editing, in the editing I, uh, because I, the first draft it was, has more humor, it was more uh, uh, talked. We have, I had, I think I took out like three or four scenes uh, uh, with uh, three, uh, each one with three or four minutes of dialogue. Of course, for me it was not easy because I'm uh, till now I made movies with a lot of dialogue and uh, long scenes. Uh, I like to write dialogue, and uh, uh, of, uh, I still had this type of scenes in in the film. But after that, in the editing room, I decided to keep a certain type of rhythm and to play with this rhythm. And uh, uh, I came back to the music. There, I decided to to put other songs uh, to to uh, in order to uh, add and to uh, build that type of rhythm. Vlad, which kind of input did you have on your character? You you worked a lot with Cornelio. Uh, what did you add that wasn't in the script at the beginning, for example? Um. I talked a lot with Cornel about film noir, and we Cornel suggested me to to see some film noir movies, and um, sometimes we we watch together some sequences to understand uh, very way the the way of uh, my acting. So that helped me very much. And you, Katrina? Well, I, I think I answered this question before, no, but um, yeah, i What did you add? What I add, uh, I was listening to Corneli very well because he was <laughs> changing always uh, my character um, because um, he had different variation of Joda. So mm -hmm. I just tried to listen to him and concentrate on what he wants. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, in a way, working with uh, working in the casting of, with Vlad, for example, when we were working in the casting so long uh, time, of course you have, you, you could, you speak uh, also about the text, you speak also about that reaction. Okay, there is, uh, I don't think it's good. So it, we built it this uh, long time and we had a lot of talks and on, on the situation and those small gestures and like that, I think we accumulate a certain type of uh, 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 experience, and uh, in a way, I f we build it like that. So, guys, last chance. Any questions from the floor? Yeah. 
Qui des questions Well, so one last question for you. Do you know how to whistle now? Do you do, you, do, you do it yourself? And can you direct your, your next film like that? <laughs> no, unfortunately, I, no, uh, I don't know. I wanted to take the classes when Kiko came in, in, uh, in Bucharest, but uh, at that time I uh, had to finish another draft of the script to apply to a finance, so I chose to, to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.